Today we'll be talking nutrition and fibroids. So if you have any questions for us, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. The WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana and you would like to contribute to the conversation, use the country code plus two three three. I have been joined by state registered nutritionist Akosia Kunedu Yadam. Good morning, Akosia. Good morning, Jifa. How are you? I'm awesome yourself. I'm good. Thank you so much for being with us. Always a pleasure. Now, nutrition and fibroids, how why is this important? What you eat as far as fibroids is concerned? Hmm. Okay, so um, 80% of all women will go through fibroids. Hmm. Some will naturally go away, and then others will need to be taken off, depending on the treatment plan you and your surgeon or your specialist, your doctor, decide on. It could be through um, drug therapy or myomectomy. That is a procedure hmm. where we take fibroids um, out and still preserve the uterus. 80%? 80%. So the reason why um, it is not so much out there is because, like I said, sometimes nature happens and so they are washed away or they go away. But 80% of all women. So it's a very serious thing as far as female health is concerned. Mm -hmm. And so I know that this conversation will really help a lot of women. So. Yes, 80% will go through, but for some women, nature happens, and so they are able to kind of flush it out. For some people, based on a healthy lifestyle, um, taking of healthy meals or balanced meals, there are people who stick with, let's say, professionals, like a nutritionist, mm -hmm. and so definitely they are guided on as to what to even eat. The research also says that it is common in people who are overweight and obese, especially mm -hmm. women who are overweight, who are obese. It can ap affect women at all ages, but it's within 30 to 40. That is where massive numbers are. So if you are a woman of childbearing age, you, mm. you, can, you can obviously find yourself having this. So What is fibroids? Okay, so they are growth, okay. which has brought about as far as um, elevated levels of estrogen okay. and progesterone are concerned. Now, females, we need progesterone in us because it's responsible for we having breast, mm -hmm. and then it's also responsible for the production of uh, breast milk. So you, you can't go without progesterone as far as being a woman is concerned. If you're of childbearing age and would want to be a mother, would want to have a child, would want to breastfeed, yes. And estrogen levels, are, it, hormones in general, will need to be in a regulated amount, um, 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 level. Mm -hmm. So for men, the estrogen levels are normally low. So if you have a man with a higher um, level as far as estrogen is concerned, you have some men developing breasts. Yeah. <laughs> so that is what is, uh, it can, it's a cause. Yeah, so you need to make sure it is within a certain balance and what we are eating, what we are putting in our system can reduce our risk of having this. Um, research also says that um, if you are going through certain complications, you'll go through them all. If you bleed heavily, if you are experiencing certain things, I know that as the conversation pro progresses, we will we'll touch on that. And for people who smoke, mm. yes, there is a 50% increased chances within the 80% of women for people who smoke, women who smoke to so have fibroids. for those. It's what higher. are some of the causes and, and, and symptoms before we even get into the eating bit? Okay, so for the causes, like I said, nature happens. I'm a woman. So you it could are be a woman. Or? So nature uh, uh, okay. uh, can be happening. But obviously, yes, I think things we do. As a matter of fact, no research has been able to stick it at out and say that this is what this is what is causing fibroids but mm -hmm. obviously certain happenings can influence them um, you having um, 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 them for people who like a lot of sugars so lifestyle, sugars, choices, lifestyle choices so okay. to even start with further introduction I would say that adopting a healthy eating pattern or you sticking with a meal plan, you knowing what to eat, the quantities to eat, and then a healthy lifestyle sets you right as to you reducing your risk of having um, this. And the cause can also be elevated levels, I spoke about estrogen. Mm -hmm. So your hormones are supposed to be within a certain balance. Okay. If you have more of it, then it puts you 
at risk of having this. And as compared to people, I, am, I have a normal BMI to the glory of God. <laughs> and so if you are overweight, if you are obese, there are people, grade three obesity, there are people who are morbidly obese. They come out and they, they enter the house when everybody else has closed from work. So if you find yourself within that category, if you are hypertensive, and we've spoken extensively about hypertension and what contributes to it, if you find yourself in these brackets, you can influence. And so at that point, it can serve as a course or a leading course. So we're managing the probability of getting mm -hmm. fibroids because there's no one size fits all. There's no you can avoid it as a woman. Where do we start from as far as eating is concerned? Okay, so for the eating um, basic rule, I would say that um, you need to make sure you are taking a lot of fluids. Okay. Yes, and then you would have to, so it depends on whoever is taking care of you. Like I said, the way I practice as a nutritionist is different from the way you will practice if you are a nutritionist. So based on the surgeon or the specialist taking care of you, they can say that, okay, for your myomas, another name for fibroids, mm -hmm. isn't so big and so we would want to do drug therapy mm -hmm. so that we kind of shrink yeah. it in, in, in a way. So you can use anti-hormonal medications to shrink the size of, of, the, of or the fibroids. And so, okay, for me, let's say as your, your caregiver or your doctor, I would say that, okay, I'm doing drug therapy. For somebody, he, they want to do myomectomy. That is a procedure of removing the fibroids. And it is the safest. If you're a woman and you are within childbearing age and you have dreams of getting pregnant in the future, even after um, and fibroids are removed, then you should go in for myomectomy because it will take them off and still protect your uterus, which is the house for the baby as far as conception is concerned. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, Difa, you need to make sure that I know if I'm, I'm answering your question. Yes, what, what do we eat? So, like I, like I said, you making sure that there are there, can we have our points as far as what we can, we can eat? But you said we should take a lot of fluids. A lot of so fluids drink and, then and lots stick of to water. A balanced, a balanced, a balanced meal or a healthy, a healthy, diet. A healthy diet. Okay. Most people will go like, I want to have the Mediterranean um, diet. So for low fat foods, it's okay. for people who sometimes after a procedure or after undergoing myomectomy will have um, their tummy reacting to what they are eating. Uh -huh. So for such people, you need to go low as far as your fat intake is concerned. So these uh -huh. are some examples of fat foods. Okay. So they, 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 they are soothing to your, your guts because there are people who, after the procedure, will zoom in and start eating everything they were eating, and they are okay. Uh -huh. But there are people who also react. So it is basically important for such people to go low as far as um, um, fat is concerned. So, so we have the whole meat, meal, okay. we have lean meat, even the Mediterranean diet will make sure you are doing chicken more and fish more, ah, the seafoods more, okay. over red meat. Red okay. meat is also um, um, one that can increase your ah. risk of having this. So at a certain age in your life, you should know where to be cutting down on certain things mm -hmm. and when, where to also be, be increasing certain things, obviously, okay. because you're talking about the fact that you don't need red meat. So mm -hmm. this is an example of what you can, you can, you can have for so, persons so, who have, um, let's say, um, undergo, undergone. And potassium rich food is very important also for people who have high blood pressure mm. so it it's it, it regulates or check the salt um, level. Um, um, level and okay. helps with balancing okay. yes in, in as far as persons with high blood pressure is concerned so mm. if you have myomas or you have fibroids and you have hypertension yeah. or yes you are hypertensive then it means that you have to pay much attention to um, potassium rich foods. Okay, so that's more avocados, yes. seeds, spinach, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. And you can get all of these things locally at, a, at, at an affordable price, actually. And then you need water. to. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you need to cut down on alcohol consumption. So foods okay. that reduce your risk of fibroids, if you can have that. Foods that reduces your risk of fibroids. Okay. You can have a healthy meal. We've, we've talked about it. A design meal plan can help focus on the Mediterranean diet, cutting uh -huh. down or avoiding alcohol. Okay. And then we have balanced estrogen levels. We've spoken about it. Add vitamin D, potassium, calcium, and fiber-rich foods to your meals. You, foods that reduces your risk for fibroids. Okay, okay. so... 
these ones increase your risk. Let's let's move with them. So red meat, we spoke about it. Alcohol, you have fifty percent increased risk of fibroids in persons who women who, who consume alcohol, alcohol. Okay. at least a glass of beer or more wow. per day. You have increased chances and then unbalanced estrogen levels. We've spoken about it. I've explained okay. this um, unbalanced estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the fourth one. It's yes, what your blood pressure. About it. So I said you should make sure you lose weight and then you avoid chemicals that affect your hormonal um, um, le levels. Okay. Like the dyes we use for our hair, the personal care products we use as ladies. Can they be also, harmful. Yes, can be wow. harmful. So you should know what sits in the product you are using and then watch your blood pressure. Okay. And then I've spoken about it that it is kind of um, um, higher in persons with high blood pressure. Uh -huh. And then lack of vitamin D. So okay. research says that people People who are dark skinned uh -huh. or find themselves in a cooler environment. Jifa, for the sake of the show, you probably leave the house, let's say five. Mm -hmm. You have to drive all the way here. You hardly will see the sun. You leave in the evening. Definitely with everything we have here as far as the studio is concerned, it's cold in here. Mm -hmm. So for you, there is a critical need for you to do supplementation because mm. vitamin D is produced in the body when you are exposed to the to sun. The sun yeah. Yes, and so if you are not exposed to the sun, then it means that something has to be done and that has to be with supplementation. And then sugars, other sugars, mm. they affect you or increase so your So this risk. is when you take too many, you know, refined, sodas, yes, corn refined, syrup, and stuff. And then the okay. carbonated drinks. And okay. then the sixth one, the seventh one, lack of calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium. They all help as far as um, checking your estrogen and certain things in your, in, in your system. We have okay. magnesium rich foods. We've discussed them extensively. You mm -hmm. can go to City Tube and then find the previous conversations. And then eat low fat foods. We've projected that. So eating this will increase your risk of having fibroids. So, so don't do that. So don't do it or know how to go about it. Okay. Now let's look at phosphorus rich foods. We have uh, fish, we have meat, we have a bit of cheese there that you can consume to ensure. What would this do for your body? So you, you imagine that you realize that I spoke about the Mediterranean diet. It is friendly as far as the Mediterranean ah. diet is concerned. You don't have red meat sitting in there. Mm -hmm. You have, um, for the Mediterranean diet, you have whole meals, vegetables, and fruits sitting at the base. Ah. And then it's followed by... Uh, so if, if possible, avoid that meat in there. No, this That's one... That's not meat? This, no. Ah, okay. I thought that was meat no. on top of the fish. So this has to do with seafood. So I was speaking about the Mediterranean um, diet. It okay. has fruits, vegetables, and then... It has a, um, it has a seafoods following, okay. and then it has a milk products following, and then the apex has to do with alcohol, sweets, and even for the food pyramid, it's always at the apex because you don't need a lot of them. You need to make sure you are cutting down. So if you are somebody who is within this age brackets, just uh -huh. be conscious about it because if basically you are eating a balanced diet or a healthy diet, it will always put um, some of these things in, in check. If you are mm. varying your meals, if you are not always taking kenke, banku, or this or that, you, you, you are sure that you will have every macro, macro and then micronutrients. So, okay. yes. Now, uh, how do we ensure that we're, we're, we're doing the right things and we're also not taking too much of whatever it is we need to ensure that we don't get uh, the fibroids. Like I said, no single thing, no research will sit and say that, okay, this is what is causing fibroids, but basically adapting a healthy lifestyle. I've spoken about the fact that 50% um, uh, of, of, of women who smoke are at an increased risk of having this. So lifestyle sit heavily in that. And even for myomes, after you've gone through myomectomy or after it's been solved, 33, you have a 33% chances of growing them back. Hmm. So for some people, they've gone through, they've had fibroid, they've gone through, um, let's say, procedure, not once, not, not twice. So it is very important for the one who is yet to experience it, the one experiencing it in their foods you can eat if you're experiencing it. And for the ones who have successfully under, undergone a procedure as far as myomectomy, a drug um, therapy, whatever is concerned. You need, we all need to be on the guard because it can happen. We don't know when it will happen. Hmm. Now let's look at the symptoms and complications 
that uh, are associated with with fibroids okay so for the symptoms we we have them so we have um, pains mm -hmm. we have heavy menstrual flow or when bleeding. we say pains what do we mean abdominal exactly? cramps okay yes okay. and then we have constipation so for people who even undergo um, a procedure or myomectomy or drug therapy sometimes they experience these uh. yes yeah, so if you are experiencing um, um let's say constipation or for us as ladies we uh -huh. we have not had it yet you've not yeah, had it yet no. before mm -hmm. yes yeah, so if you have um iron deficiency if you have difficulty in getting pregnant there are couples who are struggling they are um, they are having miscarriages uh -huh. if you are gaining weight you need to check because if you are putting on weight fibroids can grow for 20 to 40 pounds that is um, 9 to 18 kg uh -huh. sitting in, in in your tummy so yeah. it can obviously affect your weight gain if you are experiencing any of these and it happens in 20 to 50 percent of the 80 percent of women who will go through this or if on the regular you are experiencing this and you know you fall within this age bracket, then you need to seek a second opinion. Yes, it's your body. Listen to your body and be able to ask for help. When you realize that this is it, you can consult your medical practitioner or agree on a treatment plan and be conscious to involve a nutritionist or a dietitian as well because it has something to do with what you are eating. Thank you very much, Akusia. Lastly, any tips for us, especially people who have just discovered that they have fibroids and they are trying to manage it and not necessarily take it out yet? Okay, so um, you can you can you can you can get pregnant after 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 my So what I, what I would tell you is that do the right thing, seek proper proper care. If it's my which is the safest, go through it, and afterwards you need to meet. A professional nutritionist or dietitian to help you. Last Thursday, I had one of the most amazing news. A mm. client had lost 18 kg, and wow. she wants to undergo IVF. Okay. And it was like after the procedure, you need to lose weight so that everything can happen. Mm. And I'm like, I'm just going to tell them, you need to make sure that you work on yourself. If you are overweight, if you are obese if you are hypertensive you need to take care of yourself you need to take care of your body and if you are experiencing any of the symptoms we spoke about if you are struggling to conceive if you are having miscarriages if you are bleeding you need to really pay attention because my ms may be growing thank you very much akosia where do we contact you so on Instagram at the nutritionist Akosia, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, nutritionist Akosia, and you can reach me on zero two four three three five zero two zero six. So it's a pleasure to have you. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> so guys, there you have it. You know there are certain meals we can take to ensure that we don't get fibroid, or at least we manage it well. Pumping lean meat, eat all the calcium enriched foods that you can and consult a professional like Akosia Konedu Yadom to manage it. Hi there, we hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV.